Hey everybody, welcome to another goodyreader.com review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today, we're going to check out the iPod Touch 5. We're primarily evaluating the ebook reading experience and the comic book reading experience. You can see it's fairly large screen. It's a 4 inches diagonally. The resolution is 1136 by 640 with 326 PPI. Storage options, you have between 32 and 64 gigs. We have the 32 model. Camera, very respectable. 5 megapixels on the back, which will give you 1080p video streaming, as well as 1.2 megapixels on the front, which will give you about 720. This is good for Skype, uh, WhatsApp and you know various other sort of programs that will allow you to talk or do video calls. Front facing camera, wicked addition to the product line. Of course it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, speakers and sound quality are fairly amazing. We're just going to give you a sense of what the hardware looks like. Alright, so you have that kind of signature piano white um, finish on it which is very nice. Uh, as Michael said, front facing camera, uh, very nice fingerprint resistant touchscreen. The uh, you know the go-to all Apple button at the bottom. Everything's nice and flush. There's no uh, there's no really difference between the bezel and the screen. It's very nice and flat. On the left you have uh, volume up and down. Very nice sleek silver. Uh, it does come in a many different colors as well. Power button slash uh, standby button on the top. On the left, nothing much going on, offering a very nice, clean, thin look. Look at that. That is nice. On the bottom, you have the speaker, you have the new Apple port, and you have 3.5 mil headphone jack. You'll notice the speaker is on the corner, which is really nice. However, you notice that's flush there. If you pop that up, you actually let the audio escape a little bit. So you can push that down that up. Offering a much clearer audio experience. Here's the back. Oh, what's this? What's this up here? Goody reader. Oh, yeah. We have the uh, full 5 megapixel 1080p recording on the back. Flash LED. Microphone. And uh, very nice silver backing on this particular one, but as we said before, it does come in many colors. This is very skinny and very portable. To give you a sense on how skinny it is, we have a few smartphones here as like a benchmark. We have here the BlackBerry Torch 2 and we have... We have an Android SH12C on the left. Okay, so let's put them all side by side just to show you how thin this device really is. Very thin for the Apple. Much thicker for the Android although we are boasting a 3D camera so it, you're gonna get a little bit more thickness and the Blackberry looks like it wins on the fat scale <laughs> it's uh, of course Blackberry torch is a slider so it doubles in thickness when it's uh, together however uh, when you do get just the screen looks like you know the screens a little thinner but uh, remember this is the whole device and uh, um, yeah, dealing with a very very thin device yeah I mean I like the thin and the lightweight sort of aesthetic that we have going on here. It's extremely portable. It, it weighs next to nothing, sits in your blazer pocket very effectively. The next thing that we're going to do is check out the e-reading experience. Okay, so we have it turned on as you can see here. And if you have any of the previous iPhone models, especially the new, uh, you know, the fifth generation one, this looks very much akin to what you have here. You have sort of the, the maps, the, the Apple maps, you have like their new sort of weather type thing going on here. Sort of very cool. Uh, Passbook, which is a new edition, basically allows you to, you know, pay for things. Boarding passes and such. The main thing I have here is the Starbucks app, so you could attach your credit card to there flip it to the barcode reader and you could basically do you know pay for things without having your wallet on you it's very very solid and uh, I really like this I mean it's the perfect size screen to be able to use it as sort of your go-to mp3 player 
Let's give you a sense on how the audio looks. So if you're listening to it just uh, with the speakers, it's fairly good, but you also have the groovy new headphones that Apple has uh, put out. You can see them here there. They sort of have two different speakers. And they fit in your ears really well. I mean, um, I, I found immediately when I put these in my ears that they, you know, didn't slide out. They're very optimized for the grooves inside of it. So they're free headphones. And what we're going to show you now is the ebook reading experience. We have the iBooks app here. And as you can see here, you can do the whole peak thing. This is sort of, um, you know, not the largest screen to read ebooks, but you do have uh, the ability to dim your screen depending on whereabouts you're reading. You can also hit this, which just increases the size of the text or decreases it. You can change the font type completely. So you see a number of options here. You also see themes. This is also very new. You have the traditional book theme that we showed you that turns the pages, allows you to peek, but you have a new scroll feature. This sort of gives you a web page type experience where instead of flipping the page, you're just scrolling. Some people may really like this. Some websites have even went as far as to say that this is a game changer. Which I don't know about that, but it certainly gives you more of that RS feed web type experience that some people are used to. So you can't do here, but if you, you can, you, know, you can highlight words. See a number of options here, different highlights. It's fairly cool. Most ebook reading apps, Kindle, Kobo, so, uh, Bar Barnes & Noble, they all have sort of their pros and cons. This is just the iBooks app. It's basically not preloaded, but as soon as you turn it on, you're prompted to install a number of apps. What do you think, Peter, of the, you know, of the size of the screen and how you go about reading? Um, I must say the scroll feature is a little different. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I really agree with the whole scrolling. I mean, I, I'd say it doesn't really feel like you're reading much of a book, and it just almost feels like you're endlessly reading with no breaks. But uh, I, I personally like turning pages, so I, I don't really mind if it takes an extra half a second. But overall, uh, I mean, you can do text changes. You can uh, turn it to night mode, C sepia or sepia to, uh, you know, be less harsh of a contrast and also what Michael demonstrated there you can change the color of the highlights which we haven't seen on pretty much any tablets uh, so far I think that's a nice little feature there I totally agree so there are other things that you could do on here besides just read ebooks you could read comic books so we have the Marvel app here so you could just double tap to give you a sense of the text. Double click to go back to it. You can also get sort of that guided panel view. With a small screen like this, this is pretty well what you would may ideally want to do because you don't really have to pinch and zoom, although you, you do have the flexibility to do that. So you saw that this takes up the full frame. You can also zoom out and stuff like that too. Of course, there are some options here. Letterboxing, no letterboxing. You can just see for yourself some of the settings there. Click here to view all the details. This comic book just came out the other day. I kind of dig it. Of course, you can also read in landscape mode too if you want. Both iBooks and a Marvel comic app, um, you know, support a number of things like that. So you can see how small it really is. But once you start double clicking, 
you can sort of turn the pages and stuff. You can get rid of the letterboxing too if you want. So just going back to landscape mode. You can see here that in in landscape mode, this was very small, but once we flipped it to portrait mode, it becomes like really easy. So comic books actually look pretty good on this. And I'm a huge comic book fan, so if you like manga, if you like comics, if you like a lot of things, there's plenty of apps on sort of the, the app store that will give you access to all of this. So, I mean, you see for yourself that sometimes reading comics, you know, it's you have to optimize it correctly. You can see it's it's fairly small here, but this is um you know a very nice picture it's vibrant takes advantage of like the high resolution uh, comics and things like that so not only can you just listen to music but you, it's it's also like a viable sort of e-reader and when you're on the go it only has wi-fi so you don't ha enjoy like the types of 3g or anything like that but you could fairly easy just if you have a phone that has uh you know, tethering or something like that. Apologize about the sc screen flickering, but that's how cameras and LCD works. You can turn on a mobile hotspot, and then you can purchase music, ebooks, and things like that while you're on the go. So essentially, if you do have a data plan um, with a cell phone in your pocket, and you're using this as an everyday kind of multimedia MP3 player, you do have constant on-the-go internet access wherever you are via Wi-Fi and the mobile hotspot. Yeah, when when I was actually coming here in a cab, uh, I wanted to download some music, and I just turned on my hotspot. I bought a book. I listen. I bought some few music tracks, and it went pretty quickly. So if you have like a an, like a super fast connection, it's cool. I just have a standard 4G connection. One thing that we've noticed is the small connection here. This is definitely different from previous models of, say, like the iPad or iPhone, where you almost had that 30-pin connector. This is significantly smaller. One of the, the drawbacks of this is that most docking stations, most you know, uh, Bluetooth speaker setups that also function to charge your unit are not compatible with this. There's hardly even any that are made. So you need to buy sort of a, a lightning adapter if you want to ch you know, use this on your dedicated uh, docking station. Um, it's you're looking at about thirty-six dollars or so. It doesn't do video, but they do have a, an EV an AV option. But it's like around sixty, seventy dollars. There are third-party ones that do it as well. So, it's in terms of like a wrap-up here. I'm a huge fan. I mean, you have full unfeathered access to the iTunes and the App Store. Um, you see here that we have iTunes U. We have plenty of programs basically this is like the equivalent of the, the iPhone 5 without the phone it's skinnier but it you do enjoy all the benefits so Peter the final thoughts um, I really think overall it's a great device uh, I like the reading capabilities um, although it's a small screen there's enough font augmentations and uh, scrolling features to change your ebook experience to make it comfortable uh, the panel view for comics is great because uh, it makes use of that small screen, like I said, to really get zoomed into each of those squares. Uh, conjunction with your 3G or 4G data plan, you can actually turn this into an on-the-go, uh, internet-accessible device. So essentially, with WhatsApp and Skype, you can communicate with this iPod Touch, 5th uh, generation. The one thing I must add is the port on the bottom, how you have to have an adapter that's 30 to $70 just to utilize your old port completely against that I don't I don't much approve of that at all um, I know it's kind of seems like a money grab because they could have easily just that you can see the video here we're gonna play this for a sec but if I just point out at the bottom it's there's more than enough room to put that port uh, and still keep the size so I don't know why they did that it just seems like a way to get 30 to 70 dollars out of each additional purchase of the device or the phone don't agree with that other than that it's a pretty good device overall. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I I have the iPad, uh, the the iPad uh, with Retina display, and I've had all the previous generations, and so 
I, I do dig the Apple ecosystem in terms of when I install an app on my iPod Touch 5, it's automatically installed on my iPad. I could grab pictures and, and things like that. Um, if you are a, a big Apple fan and you have an iPhone or if you have an iPad or Apple TV, all of these like sync to each other pretty well with iCloud. And so iCloud really allows you to access the same same game center, uh, all of the, you know, basically the same apps and stuff like that. Uh, uh, with the Marvel Comics, I could basically, anything I bought on my iPad, I can easily access uh, on my iPod Touch 5th generation. Um, from like a pure e-reading perspective, it, it's pretty good on the go um, if you want to like read and things like that. I find when I'm, I'm flying uh, on airplanes or if I'm commuting, the iPad's almost like too bulky to like whip out and use, whereas I'm always on my phone, but I can see this as being my new go-to device, especially if I can like tether it with like my uh, Blackberry torch for a hotspot. So that's fairly cool. Um, you've seen a lot of the things that it does here. Uh, video looks amazing. Uh, Ebooks, high resolution, high contrast. Um, there's hundreds of thousands of games, apps available via the iTunes store. And again, any music purchase you make would be synced automatically to your PC, to your iPad, or any other device that you may have. So we want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, please comment on this video. If you're watching it on an alternative source, you can check it out at youtube.com slash goodyreader. And for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and industry coverage you can check out our website goodereader.com and for goodereader my name is michael this is peter everybody take care <music>